Hi there. In this video I'll be answering a question on capacitors, looking at how the voltage across a capacitor changes as it charges and how the current in the circuit changes as the capacitor charges and discharges. Here's a question from the 2012 revised higher paper. The charging and discharging of a capacitor are investigated using the circuit shown. The power supply has an EMF of 12 volts and negligible internal resistance. The capacitor is initially uncharged. Part A then says the switch is connected to A, like so, and the capacitor starts to charge. We're then asked to sketch a graph showing how the voltage across the plates of the capacitor varies with time. Your graph should start from the moment the switch is connected to A until the capacitor is fully charged. Numerical values are only required in the voltage axis. So I'll start off by giving myself more room for the graph. The first thing to notice is that the voltage is on the Y axis and time is on the X axis. Remember, we're also asked for the numerical values in the voltage axis. You can see from the circuit diagram that the supply voltage is 12 volts, and hopefully you'll remember that the voltage across the capacitor increases from 0 volts to the supply voltage, 12 volts in this case, as it charges. Our graph then should look like this. In this circuit, the capacitor is fully charged when the voltage across it is equal to the supply voltage of 12 volts. Make sure you know the shape of the voltage time graph as the capacitor discharges, as it would do if the switch was connected to B. Here's part B of the question. The capacitor is now discharged by moving the switch to B. The graph of current against time as the capacitor discharges is shown. We're then asked to calculate the resistance R. Let's just remind ourselves first of the circuit. So, maybe you're thinking that there's something a bit odd about this graph of current against time as the capacitor discharges. That's because we're so used to seeing a graph like this as the capacitor charges a positive current which decreases to zero, and this is the capacitor discharges, a negative current which decreases in magnitude again to zero. The reason for this is that as the capacitor charges, in this circuit we'd connect the switch to A, the electrons making up the current move upwards through the ammeter and are then deposited on the bottom plate of the capacitor, which becomes negatively charged. Electrons are then repelled off of the top plate, leaving it positively charged. When the switch is connected to B, the electrons move off of the capacitor's bottom plate and down through the ammeter, so the current is in the opposite direction as the capacitor discharges. In this question, the graph only shows current against time as the capacitor discharges. Because of that, it doesn't need to be drawn as negative to indicate that the current during discharge is in the opposite direction to charging. Answering this question is actually very straightforward. We just use Ohm's law. The maximum current while charging or discharging is limited by the resistor in the circuit. The maximum current while charging is set by the 1 kilo ohm resistor and the maximum current while discharging is set by resistor R. So, rearranging to make resistance R the subject, we get R is equal to V divided by I, where V is our supply voltage of 12 volts and I is our maximum current of 2 milliamps. This gives us an answer of 6000 ohms. Here's the final part of the question. The 220 microfarad capacitor is now replaced with one of different value. This new capacitor is fully charged by moving the switch to A. It's then discharged by moving the switch to B. The graph of current against time as this capacitor discharges is shown. Explain why the value of the initial discharging current remains the same as in part B. The first thing I'll do is overlay the graph from part B for the 220 microfarad capacitor. You can see for yourself that the initial discharging current is exactly the same with this new capacitor. The initial maximum current can be calculated using Ohm's law by dividing the supply voltage by the resistance of the resistor. Since both these quantities are constant, the initial discharging current will also be unchanged. We could write something like this then. The initial current only depends on the supply voltage of the power supply and the resistor R, both of which are constant. The final part of the question asks, how does the capacitance of this capacitor compare with the capacitance of the original 220 microfarad capacitor? You must justify your answer. So remember that this line is a graph of current against time for the new capacitor. You can see that it takes less time for the current to decrease to zero. In other words, less time to discharge. It must be then that this new capacitor has a smaller capacitance since it takes less time to discharge. Decreasing the resistance of resistor R 
would also cause the capacitor to discharge in a shorter time, although this would also increase the initial maximum current. And that's us for now. If you're finding these videos useful, then why not subscribe to get updates when new ones are released. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.